Hello everyone. Today is going to be a story about the era they want you to forget. And they try very hard to make you forget. And you have the feminists to thank for this. The era I'm speaking about is right after World War II. America is prosperous despite having just been through a war. America is up and rising. People are paying high in taxes. Libraries are being built, freeways are being built, a life is growing and expanding in the United States. Families have a good, decent job, they're paying around 90% on tax, and they're all living productive lives. They also all worship God. At this moment and era in time, they are all worshiping God. America is a Christian nation. This is why we also have In God We Trust on the dollar bill. It's actually from that era. This era was protected by one president. His name was John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy warned the entire nation that bad times were coming. That he found out that there were secret societies out there, secret cabals, that wanted to destroy the nation from the inside out. And he tried to warn everybody, and he did. And in his final speech, he told everybody about the secret societies and how he was against them. Uh, just one week later, he was shot in the head by his own wife. Now, why is this so important, this era and time? It's 65 years ago. It's a long time ago. Well, because we can really see, if we look at the timeline between 1900 and 2015, if you could put a timeline there, those 115 years, you would see where the prosperity just comes to a crashing halt and destruction takes over. And this moment in time is exactly where John F. Kennedy is shot. You're looking right now at a picture of people praying inside of a classroom. Do you see that? They're all standing up, praying to God. Yes, praying to God. America was a Christian nation. They don't want you to remember that. They want you to forget about that. America has tried its hardest to get rid of God. You've brought in things that God is completely against, but you have to understand what will happen to you if you continue down those roads. You see, not only is God against homosexuality, not only is he against not worshiping him, not only is he against the abortions that are going on, he is literally telling you that if you continue down this road, he will have to punish you. For the last two years straight, you have been hit by polar vortexes in the winter where all 50 states were covered in snow and ice. Understand that. That is a biblical warning. That is no different than Moses being struck by the, uh, by the Pharaoh is being struck by Moses' curses, okay? By Moses' plagues. God is warning you. Last year, God sent nine feet of snow to Boston to warn you all to cut out your shit. Here you also see little children praying in school. Before class, they all got together in the circle and they said their prayers. Usually on Monday mornings, they would all come in and they would talk about their weekends and they would all say a prayer in school. All acknowledging God, worshiping God, and understanding that God is not only real, but that he is very important. Then comes evolution, right after John F. Kennedy shot. Feminism comes in, right after John F. Kennedy is shot. Do you see how these things have been stacking up over the last 60 years? Before... John F. Kennedy is shot. America is a Christian-loving nation. John F. Kennedy gets shot by his wife. The globalists step up. They remove Bible from school, as you can see right here. Here, people are boasting in this picture about how proud they are that they got rid of the Bible from schools, talking about how it's a 50-year anniversary. That should say to you that God has been so patient with you, he's given you 50 years to change your mind, to change your mind to turn around again. But you're not. You keep going down the road. Don't you all know what happened to the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah? What was the turning point for God to destroy it? When it came down, when God came down to earth and he said to Abraham, uh, if there are 50 people in the city, I will spare the city. And Abraham was able to get God down to five good people in the city to spare the city. God still destroyed the city, despite the fact that Lot, Abraham's nephew, Lot's wife and two, uh, two daughters were also in the city. That means that they only needed to find one more good person to save the city. Now, what dragged the city down so bad? 
that God himself could not find one good soul. I'll say that again. Sodom was destroyed by God after Abraham got God down from finding 50 good souls down to five good souls. Lot, Abraham's cousin, at that time was in the city and he had a wife and two daughters. That's four good people. They had to flee. The angels told them to flee. That means that God only had to find one more good person. And he couldn't do it. So he destroyed the cities by fire and brimstone. And there is evidence of the cities been found today that is all completely covered in ash and brimstone. So what dragged this country down? This, I'm sorry, what, what, what dragged these cities down? Well, it was murder. But it was also rape. But it wasn't just any kind of rape. No, no, no. It was homosexuality rape. You see, when people used to come into the town of Sodom, they would hang up the newcomer into a box. They would grab the newcomer as soon as he came into the city, throw him in a box, hang him up on top of the city, and hang him in there for a couple of days until they started to get starving. Then they would rape the person. The whole city would come by and gang rape the guy or the woman that's inside of the box. Everybody avoided Sodom. It was a very dangerous city. Even when the angels came down to Sodom, the people of the city wanted to rape the angels. So the point being simply is here, folks, we have already experienced what happens when you allow the homosexuals loose. We have already experienced what will happen if you let the feminists rule. You see, when you have a group in this world that does not care for other people's opinions, only their own, that is called a totalitarian ideology. That means they will step on, crush, destroy anybody or anything that stands in their way. And that is a very dangerous ideology to have. You cannot have that in a democracy, in a free world. You cannot have such barbaric behavior. And yet, we are seeing it today. And the Christians are being crushed. So now, since you have allowed abortion into your country, God has taken away some of your blessings. You want abortion? God destroyed family. Do you see the connection there? God has always watched over the country. But since you're disobeying him, he has to punish you. Now, since you want to take part in abortion, he's like, okay, I'll destroy the family. I'll teach you all a lesson. You see, God is plaguing America right now with all the biblical plagues. And you're not waking up. You would rather say, okay, wait, let me put it this way. In my Bible, it says very clearly, there will be earthquakes, famines, droughts, sinkholes. All these issues will happen. Animals will start dying by the thousands. You are seeing this worldwide happening right now, exactly according to the Bible. And what does humanity have to say? Oh, it's global warming. While the Bible calls it the birthing pains of Christ's second return, the world is calling it global warming. And that's what I'm talking about. You have done everything possible to completely deny the fact that God is real. You lie to your people. You lie to your brethren. You don't care what propaganda you have to spew as long as it keeps coming out the way that you need it to. So you have the feminists right now that are running amok who are known demon worshippers. You have a six foot statue being built right now. It's already been built, put somewhere in Washington, of a demonic entity. You guys, listen to me. America is heading down the road of Luciferianism. And they're going to try to trick you. The Bible even says this is going to happen. You are heading down the road of Luciferianism, and the only person that ever stopped this from happening was John F. Kennedy. He was the one that knew this was coming. He tried to warn everybody it was coming. He actually died to protect you to, to let you know that it's coming. Show some respect for history. So you've been warned for 60 years that it's coming, and you have done nothing. You have allowed your nation to die, you have allowed cities to die, you have allowed your families to die, and you don't turn back to God and apologize for what you have done. So now you have men that are acting like women, and women acting like men. The reversism of everything, and as I've told you previously before, several, several times, that if you want to know if something is demonic or not, all you have to do is say, is this the reverse of reality? If it is the reverse of reality, it is 1,000% guaranteed, honest to God, truth that it is demonic. Because Satan always does everything in reverse. She is known to do that. 
And when you study the Bible, you will see that Satan has always done everything in reverse. Always. Even the rebellion, the very first rebellion, is against God. That's reverse of the way it should be. So Satan right now has convinced American women that they are men, and has convinced American men that they are women. Sorry to say it, but that's true. American men are completely emasculated nowadays. You don't have any balls left or any spines. You're too afraid to lose your woman, yet losing your woman is the best thing that could be possibly ever happened to you. Not only do you, I, mean, I know a lot of you think, well, I'll be lonely. I'll be sad without my wife. No, you will be free without that woman. You will be uh, without curse without that woman. You will be set free of all your burden. Oh, sure, it might hurt a little bit at first, but you will get over it. And you will become a lot stronger as a male. You, and even the Bible says, you know, that if you're going to be a weak male, at least marry the woman you're going to be fucking. Don't keep fucking women without getting married to one. That's what the Bible says. The Bible is very clear that wanting to have women, wanting to have a wife, is a very weak thing in men. But society has created this idea that you're supposed to, you know, when you're 7 years old you play your baseball, when you're 14 years old you go to school, when you're 18 you go to college, then you settle down and have wife and kids. That's the brainwash. But the Bible says that that's the weak way for a man to go. And it is the weak way for a man to go. To desire a female is weakness in men. If you, if you as a guy ever say to another guy, hey, you're weak, man, and he has a girlfriend, you can laugh in his face saying, dude, at least I don't need a girl in my life. At least I'm not so pussified that I need a girl in my life that controls me. So all the men in America today have become so afraid of losing their females that they bend over backwards for these females. Yet these females don't deserve absolutely fuck all from you. And you think because she gives you sex, because she gives you some great head, therefore you should put her up on a pedestal and worship her. No, no, no. That's not the way it's supposed to be. Men are always supposed to be the dominant species. We are the dominant ones. We are the ones that protect. We are the ones that provide. We are the ones that build. We are the ones that create. We are the ones that sculpt. We are the ones. As a matter of fact, when the people built the Tower to Babel, God actually became afraid for a second because he said, Wow, if they're able to build this tower to us, there's nothing that they can't do. There was not a single woman building that tower that day. That was all men. <laughs> God gave man the world. This is why females today are screaming about patriarchy. Patriarchy is a pact between God, the planet Earth, and Adam. That man would always rule the earth, that all the animals, that man has dominion over all the animals, all the birds in the sea, all the creepy things that creepeth, all the things that fly, all the things that, you know, everything on this planet, man has dominated, man is supposed to be in charge of. And there is only one species on this entire planet that does not follow their own sexual orientated roles or the gender roles that they're supposed to play. And they even know they're supposed to play it because they become depressed, suicidal, and maniacs when they don't live up to the roles. You see, they even fight their own nature, and that is the human female. There is no other species on this planet that does not follow their role other than the human female. And they boast about it. They are proud about it. And it started in the 1960s with your feminism, and they called it the rebellion. You see, they are deliberately out there to spite men, to give men a hard time. To show men that they don't appreciate the fact that men used to always take care of them. Because feminazis have indoctrinated them with the false state of reality about the 1940s and 1950s. The truth about the 40s and 50s was that women, that was the best time in their lives they could have ever possibly had. They were lucky to have such a great era and they took it for granted. They took men in vain and now they're paying for it by being single mothers out there and saying it's the most hardest job in the world. The human female is 100% responsible for the way she lives today. She will never admit this to you, but based on no normal human psychology, the way that human females are headed today, they are headed for extinction. The narcissism that they do, the way that they self-sacrifice their own gender roles, their own species, they are determined to self-destruct, to annihilate themselves. And since they are nihilistic by nature, it is only a fact that nature will not take them out. 
<coughs> excuse the cough. So what I'm trying to get to here is, it has always been up to men to save women from themselves. But men today are tired of that self-sacrifice that goes completely unnoticed, uncared for, and with selfish, psychopathic thanks for their, for their deeds. Like today, uh, in the state of Canada, there are more women than there are men. So the females have the nerve to say, we are now the majority, so we want to have the most say in the legal system. But the reason that females today in Canada are the majority of people is because of World War II, when all the men went off and self-sacrificed themselves for their families, for the women, for their country, for their state, for their city, for their families, for their parents, you name it, for their neighbors, you name it, that's why they went off and died. So their sacrifice has gone completely in vain and is being used against them as well. This is the nature of female. They do not have any respect. They do not have any empathy. They do not have any caring. The only way they will ever have any caring is if they got the shit beaten out of them. That is the damnedest truth. Until they learn that they are not the center of the universe, they will always act as if they are the center of the universe. Because they are born, which only proves the Bible is more real, they are born in original sin. And the original sin was Eve eating the apple, releasing evil onto the planet, releasing sin into humanity. This is why women today, how can you even say that women are born this way without believing in the Bible? You cannot possibly say females are born this way without saying, okay, the Bible says they're born this way. Because you know what? There's no book in this world that says to you that females are born this way other than the Bible. The Bible keeps telling you how bad females are, make tell brothers out there. The Bible tells you in full detail there is no book out there that tells you how bad females are. The book of Reuben calls women evil. The book of Reuben seriously says that women are evil. Just like that. Women are evil. Simple. You don't see no book out there that says that men are bad. Men are evil. There's a reason for this, folks. So what you have to do today as a human being is do this. Everything that you have heard in your lifetime that seems to be taboo in society, ignore it. If society does not want you reading the Bible, read it. If society does not want you to watch an old movie, watch it. Because society is trying to corrupt you to go over to the Luciferian side. America is headed straight down to the gates of hell. And I know you think, oh, hell is a spiritual plane. But if you're following the Luciferian doctrine, then you are going down the gates and the path to hell. What does the Bible say about the gates of hell? The gates to hell are very wide, but the gates to heaven is very narrow. So if the gates to hell are very wide, then you look, then you look at the earth and you see what are people doing in mass that would lead them all when they die to hell. Because apparently there's something, something everybody's doing in mass, <coughs> pardon me, that will condemn them. So what are they doing in mass that's going to condemn them? Well, there's war, there's plague, there's all these things that you could say, okay, this will condemn them, but it's not that. The thing that will condemn most people is not believing in God. God says very clearly, the worst sin, worst sin that you could do, worse than being a pedophile, worse than being a murderer, is to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. So if you don't believe in God, you are blaspheming the Holy Spirit, and you will not enter paradise. And it's not even about entering paradise, folks. You don't live this life to go, oh, I'm so afraid of when I'm going to die that I'll go to hell, so I must be a very goody-goody. That's not what it's about. You're good in this life to help others achieve going to heaven as well. By setting the good example. By being the role model. If you look at my commentary on my channel, okay? All you see is people saying to me, War does fire, you speak the truth, brother. War does fire, you tell better truth than Stardust. 
Everybody's saying to me, War Drugs Fire, you tell the truth and just and analyze videos about narcissism. This is my ex-girlfriend to the T. This is my ex-boyfriend to the T. I have never once told you a single lie. I've always brought you the truth day in, day out, every single day up new. Every day. No reason to lie to you. I've actually educated myself on the Bible. And instead of keeping all my information to myself and using this information to, to play the world, because, hey, let's face it, if I realize that Saudi Arabia is going to get burnt up one day by a nuclear bomb that's going to go off by Iran, well, I can start placing bets and become a freaking millionaire. If you know the future, you can play the world like a piddle. But that's not what the Christians are supposed to do. And that's not what Christians, good Christians don't do that. And I know a lot of you have been tainted by this New Age Christianity. You see those Christians and you go, they're sinners. How am I supposed to join a pack of sinners? They don't give you, like I just said to you, the role model. They don't stand up as a righteous human being. I guarantee you this, if I said right now, hey guys, will you follow me into the next video? You all would follow me. You all know that I don't lie to you. I've earned your trust. As a matter of fact, I'm a bit of a leader. And you know why I'm a bit of a leader? Because I'm awake. And instead of being awake and prospering from being awake and only worship and worshiping myself and money and doing everything for myself, Knowing that I'm awake and everybody else is asleep, so therefore I can dominate the world, I come and try to wake other people up. And that makes me a leader. I could also be a selfish fuckhead and just say, okay, I'm going to put all my money into uh, Iran, because I, uh, into the Iranian nuclear program. I know because when they blow up Saudi Arabia, they're going to become really famous and their, and their market's going to crash. The Saudi Arabian market's going to crash. So I better invest in Iran. How many countries today are completely invested in Saudi Arabia? Thousands. Ugh. Look, folks, the Bible, I don't know why, where you get this idea that the Bible is complete phony or it's complete taboo to talk about. I don't understand where your logic comes from because I'm telling you, I can read a story in the Bible and then bring it out to video and everybody I show goes, wow, man, that is really 2015. I just made a video a couple days ago, Romans 1.30. And I stated in that video everything that's going on today in 2015. And you all left thumbs up. That means that you agree with me. So if you agree with me, that means that you must believe that the Bible's real because I get all my information from the Bible. All my wisdom, all my smarts comes from the Bible. I take no credit for myself at all. I take no credit in this whatsoever. I used to be a rock star, just a drummer in my band, okay? I wasn't a Christian. I was a Christian, but I wasn't a preacher. I wasn't a priest. No, no, no. I only became that after God intervened in my life. Understand this. Everything that goes on in your life, every bad thing that goes on in your life, every good thing that goes on in your life, is actually every good thing that's given to you in life is given to you by God. Every bad thing that happens to you is an educational tool to bring you closer to God. With this said, I'm going to cut this video off for now. I'll be back soon with more. Take care of yourselves. Have a great day. See you later. I'm out of here. Bye-bye.